Originally, this episode was going to be about the 2018 Hong Kong Malaysian film Buyer Beware, starring Carlos Chan. But as I started writing, I realised I couldn't remember enough about the stupid movie to write a decent script, so I ditched it and went and watched another horror movie. So think of this episode as two recommendations in one. Avoid Buyer Beware. It's a shitty, shitty, shitty movie. So what did I watch instead? This movie. Yep, this movie. Haunted School, The Curse of the Word Spirit, also known as Kotodama, The Spiritual Curse. But it doesn't matter what it's known as, because this movie is bad. Really bad. Also, I feel like I need to give this warning, but there are massive spoiler discussions in this video that will start in the next section and continue through the whole video. I'm going to assume you've seen it or are just curious about the film and don't care about being spoiled. A group of annoying teens in a Japanese high school decide to start telling each other scary stories about the mysterious classroom next door that seems to be abandoned. In a classic tale of ensuring every character in a scene has at least one line per scene, the movie uses a ridiculous amount of unnecessary exposition to let the audience know that half of the students in the class died in a mysterious gas accident that only affected that classroom. Did someone fart? They might as well have, because it doesn't make sense how that happened. Specifically, we follow four girls. Ayano, Miyu, Yuri, ugh, it's always a Yuri in these movies, and Mei. One of them starts seeing weird shit, like ghost's feet, and ends up in the nurse's station with a creepy nurse who wants to know all about her sex life. For God's sake, she's only 16. To add more confusion to this movie, three dudes who make internet horror video clips break into the school, which seems to be abandoned. More on that later with a cute girl wearing short shorts to make short horror video clip they hope goes viral. On top of these four people, another woman breaks into the school and then decides the audience hasn't had enough exposition in this film to then go on and tell us, and the confused cast of this movie, what the fuck's actually going on. And even after she explains it all, it still makes no fucking sense. You watch the best movies. This movie starts off with an Ouija board scene. And unlike good movies that start off with an Ouija board scene, like the Korean film Bunshin Saba, this one gets the movie off on the wrong foot. Before the spirit is even called, the hairy girl hosting the session demands the two other girls apologize. Apologize to the audience of this movie? I wish this whole theme of apologizing is used throughout this whole film, but it's never explained what it does when they apologize and why anyone even needs to apologize. Thankfully, none of the characters ever do it, which is weird for a Japanese movie. There are several more Ouija board scenes in the movie, which all seem to call the devil. Yep, their pissy little paper Ouija board is apparently the perfect board to call the great Beelzebub himself. The personification of evil, the nemesis of good people everywhere, Lord Satan himself. Hey, 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 steady, you don't want to be calling him either. You ring? Oh, fuck off. Fine, I've got some schoolgirls in Japan on the other line anyway. What doesn't make sense is what happens after the devil is called. Why does the girl's arms all of a sudden split open? Why is Mei so deeply affected by this? And was the devil's fart really that powerful enough to kill these kids? Why are there so many damn characters in this movie? It gets to the point where keeping track of everyone is a chore. There are the six girls and three boys that we follow throughout the film. There are the three boys and the other girl who make the internet videos. Then there's the woman who reads the diary. And lastly, there's the nurse. 15 characters, that's not much. It's because 15 characters means four story arcs. Except the nurse's story is never really explored or explained. Is she the manifestation of the older May? Is she an idol scout? Is she even really a nurse, considering she's writing lines in English on a piece of paper? My guess? She's the older May. Speaking of May, what the fuck? First half of the movie, she is shown as this girl who is scared of everything. 
She then disappears for a little bit and then comes back at the end of the movie, all possessed and happy to kill her friends. What is going on? Then her stupid daughter comes in and jumps on the school PA system to retell a story to no one about what happened the day with the mysterious gas slash devil fart. So what is Kotodama and how does it fit in? Well, if you know anything about Japanese culture and history, and I don't, so I had to read up about this. Kotodama essentially means word spirit. It's a Japanese belief that mystical powers dwell within words. The characters start to explain Kotodama about halfway through the movie, where they start getting frightened when they realize that the scary stories they are telling to each other come true. And this is another bit that really confused me here. How can Kotodama come into play when all of the students are already dead and everything has already happened to them? For those absolutely confused by what my partner just said, now's a great time to get you up to scratch and tell you what's going on. And remember, spoilers. These nine students are dead. They are the victims of the mysterious gas that killed them all, except Mei, in an accident in 1988. This also explains why Mei is missing for chunks of the movie, but later makes an appearance as it is revealed that Mei died many years later. The nine students seem to be stuck in some kind of limbo. Their spirits either haven't moved on or never will. This is yet another bit that's never explained. The three internet guys somehow manage to call the spirit at the school when they are shooting their movie, and they somehow get transferred into the same limbo as the other students are in. You can tell when this happens as the color switches to a cold palette in their scenes. They then later run into the students in yet another confusing scene. But wait, there are more confusing scenes. The older daughter character finds a videotape that the boys of the class filmed the day they all died. It shows the Ouija board scene and May flipping out acting all possessed. Then towards the end of the film, when Hitomi, that's the girl with the three internet video guys in the short shorts, defeats the spirit by smashing a mirror the spirit is awkwardly trying to come out of, we get another stupidly confusing scene where we have the same four girls, Ayako, Miyu, Mei and Yuri, doing the Ouija board again while those guys are videoing them. What the hell is going on? And what's with the mirror? The mirror is maybe the only good part of the movie, and that's not saying much. Like everything else in the movie, it is not explained. We have no idea what its purpose or power is, why it's so dangerous, and why it does the things it does. But at least the can scene and this other scene look good. Ah, the game, Kotedama, The Seven Mysteries of Fujisawa. It would be awesome if a movie was made out of that game. It's a match three game, where the aim is to strip your opponents down to their underwear using the power of words you have discovered throughout the game. That would have made a far better movie. Except that game is also set in a high school, so let's avoid that. That game and this movie? Totally unrelated. Well, if it's not the fact that the Ouija board is useless, the devil is not explained, there are too many unexplained characters, the mirror has no purpose, there is too much exposition, and the general confusion of the movie, then what other explanation do you need? One of the most annoying things about this movie is how unnatural it all is. It feels like you're watching a stage play where every character has to say at least one line per scene and no characters talk over the top of each other. Especially school kids, they would be constantly talking over the top of each other, yet they all patiently wait for the other to finish speaking before the next person says their predetermined line. It's so boringly unnatural. Then to add cream on top, the pace of the movie is out of whack. It's slow at the start and confusingly fast at the end. And it is so mixed up that it reminds me of watching a soap opera where the scene changes to another character every minute or so. It does have one positive, however, and that is that it's set during the daytime. You hardly ever see horror movies set in the daytime, except for Corpse Prison. That's because the daytime is not scary. Fuck this stupid movie. Yeah, fuck it. Avoid it with all of your might. Although, I can guarantee you that there is someone out there who has watched this movie, understood every little bit of it, and says that this is their favorite movie. You know what? If that's you, I want to hear from you. I want you to explain to me what this movie is about. If you've seen this movie, what did you think? I hope you enjoyed this detailed look at Kotodama. 
We have many more terrible Asian horror movies to look at over the coming year, so if you're interested, please press the like button and consider subscribing to watch the latest videos as they're released.